Hello everyone, let's learn how to create this audio reactive retro gaming pixel art effect in Touch Designer. Uh, I will show you how to create this effect uh, and then also how to use keyboard control to create more dynamic variation of it. Uh, so we're going to use this expression. And of course you can change the keyboard into other MIDI keys uh, you have. Um, so without further ado, let's start. First, add the audio of choice. In here, I'm using Mirror Can Only Lie from Selling. Then, um, I'll just close this. Uh, and then I connect it to my component, Kick and Snare and Low and High, because those are the things I normally use to drive visuals. You can find the component uh, for free in my Patreon. And then um, you can also uh, use uh, the building component audio analysis from Touch Designer. Basically, I copy them and then uh, add some of my own tweaks and make these changes. And I will show you now uh, how do I use the component. Uh, so in this one, I have kick and snare and kick and snare count. In the kick snare component, we have kick detection, snare detection, kick and snare de detection, which one of them happens it will detect and then also sometimes uh, instead of uh, zero and one you want a increasing number to map to a value and so the kick uh, kick count snare count kick and snare count becomes useful and then normally you just connect it to a now and you can drag uh, specific ones to drive the parameter to drive the parameters you want. And in here, this threshold, you can change the value to um, to get uh, a range that's most suitable for your song. Um, the value uh, by default is zero to one, and sometimes you maybe you want to use it zero to three, 0 0.3 to 0 0.5, etc. And this is the useful range you wanted in the end. And add lag, um, um, it's more natural visuals, it will add a slightly delay to our visuals. But again, for fast paced song, I tend to use zero or uh, 0 0.1. I put a zero at default, but feel free to change based on your needs and add filter. This will uh, make our visuals more smooth. Uh, will filter out the jigglish part. This uh, choppy effect is quantized. And the same for snare. Then this is a reset. We will reset the, the counts. So yeah, that's about it. And for the high and low, it's the same. Um, same fashion, a rip map value again uh, by default uh, is from 0 to 1, uh, already standardized for you. So using the envelope and uh, standardized to whatever the range you have for high and low, we've standardized already to 0 and 1. And then we uh, you can just remap the 0 and 1 to whatever range you want to work. And then this is the same, add lag, add filter, add jumps. Okay, and then there's another one is the integer. So sometimes you want to work with round numbers instead of float numbers. So you can turn on this integer. It can be used for in some cases. That's the overview of the component. And for this visual, I only using the high to drive all the different parts. And you can experiment with different um, aspects. For the main visuals, we first add a noise and add a constant, set the resolution to 9020, and then chop the reference uh, to the noise uh, resolution here. And then this is the parameters I'm using. Of course, you can change, it doesn't in impact the colors here. And in the transform here, I'm using the high uh, to, to drive it, which I will talk about later. Uh, after the noise, connect to a level, change the brightness to 0 0.6, connect it to a limit, in the quantize, change to 4, value step 0 0.3, and quantize position ceiling, position step 0 0.1. And for the bloom here, this is the parameters I'm using. And um, again, I'm using high to drive it. Um, you can either copy this for now, I will talk about about all the reactive part later as well. And then uh, connect it to a now, change the name uh, to feedback input, and then add our pixelated effect into a feedback loop. Let me close this one. 
So first we have this noise and using the quantize in the limit, we are able to turn our image into a pixelated uh, effect. And then from the pixelated effect, we connect it to a bloom. Um, in the bloom uh, pre-black level here, um, the level here determines uh, at which threshold uh, pixel will get blacked out. So if we put uh, 0 0.58, that means uh, the pixel value below 0 0.58, like the brightness below that will turn into black. So uh, essentially it just filter out the, um, the pixels, highlighted some of them. In the feedback loop here, um, we add to a feedback and add to a displays. And you just copy this bloom and this is our bloom too. You change the parameter to this then connect it to second input of displays, connect it to a now. Second part here, you add to a level and opacity 0 0.01, connect it to both of them to uh, composite uh, operation choose over, then you chop the reference back to the feedback. How to understand this is we take a slightly bit of um, bloom one with the level here, 0, 0 0.1, then we add on top of uh, the displays. We displace our bloom one slightly bit uh, with the bloom two. So you have a distorted flow, uh, bloom one and then you keep adding the previous bloom one on top of the distorted one and then we compose them together and it loop uh, again and again we, we get this uh, kind of um, effect. And as for how to make it all directive, the parameters I changed here is I uh, using the high to drive the TX and I'm using the high to drive the TZ. And to make it more natural, I add absolute time, a second divided by two, plus the high here to make it more natural. The idea here is to have a base um, speed together with the other reactivity part. Let's mark it at that. And also for the displace here, for the bloom, we also change the black level with the high. And then I'm using 0 0.6 minus this range. But you just experiment with your range to find the suitable ones that fit your need. And for the displays here, um, this is a main difference different from previous video. And we're going to use the um, keyboard control to control the UV weight here to get more dynamic looks. So for example, um, the first case, uh, you can control the UV weight with uh, the keyboard in. If I press key one, it will return me different values of the UV weight. Um, so each time I'm pressed, I get a different value. What I want to achieve here is I want to get a random number whenever I press key one. How to achieve that? We first add a keyboard in. Then uh, add a noise, choose the type random, change the seed to apps time seconds. This will give us a random number all the time. Uh, it's ranging from minus one to one. And using a mask here, we are able to, um, you just map to a range you want. In this case, I want the range from 0 0.1 to 1.4. Uh, this is the range I want for my UV weight. Then you just connect the noise to the first input and the keyboard into the second input. Now, whenever you press uh, the key one, uh, you will get a, a random number that is uh, within the range 0 0.1 to 1.4. And I connect it to a now, change the name to random number, then I connect it to another now, uh, change the name again to uh, displays you will wait because uh, when you come back to the file you still want to remember uh, with this for so it's nice to change the name to keep a good practice and this is the keyboard uh, approach another one is you can use a slider which gives you a default range from zero to one and then connect it to a mass again we change uh, the range to 0 0.1 to 1.4 then again, connect it to a now, change the name for good practice. Then you just um, chop the reference to uh, to this place. You will wait here. So this is how it looks like with 
and then you can just uh, control with your knobs okay that's basically it um, hope you like this tutorial and see you next time